Hi, um, today I'm going to talk about how to construct a convolutional neural network in R but using the Keras package from Python. So previously I have using um, a regular neural network to train the MNIST database and then I get a 85% accuracy. So today I'm going to use the convolutional neural network um, to, to, to recognize the image and uh, it can, can be rec the accuracy can be 95 or 97 percent and uh, I also have demonstrated the same thing in Python so since this is a package from Python so um, you can either use Python or, or using R to adopt the, the Python package to to uh, to build the convolutional neural network so uh, but this video is going to show only in R and I already uploaded a video for Python so uh, basically the logic is the same thing it's just using the R syntax so first of all, install the Keras package. Uh, uh, at first, I have some problem installing the Keras package, but you can always find the error message in uh, to to Google your error message and then the find a f to 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 install the package eventually. So download the MNIST database and then split. Uh, the MNIST database already come with the training set uh, testing uh, already split by training testing and then uh, for the X and Y X and Y. So you can feel just feel free to call the call the object that you downloaded divided by 255 that means uh, you standardize the pixel intensity from 0 to 255 between uh, the in, into the scale between 0 and 1 basically that's just to standardize it just to avoid um, something like a, if, if a pick number all the way is uh, numbers there's um, there's no numbers between uh, 0 to 99 and then suddenly jump from 0 to 99 that would cause a uh, that might cause that might cause some issue for your for for your modeling. So even for different kind of model like a linear regression or a classification like PCA or clustering methods, all for all your machine learning project, it would be it is it would be better to to standardize your 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 data or your number uh, at the uh, before you input into into the into into a model. So this is just to standardize it, reshape. Uh, it's just to uh, change, um, just to make, uh, to uh, also is a it's just to process uh, or to, how do you say that? Like convert the image into a proper format that can be recognized by the Keras package. Yeah, and then to categorical. So that is basically just to, um, just to uh, mark. So mark the, the, the column. So basically you create a, so for example, for, for one image, you create a, a 10 zeros as a placeholder. So if this number is, is, a, is actually a digit seven, then only the seven zeros will be marked as one. And if it, if it is a, if it is, this image is a five, then only the fifth zero will be marked as, as one. Okay. So, or maybe, I can I can demonstrate. Just take a. Uh, let's see if I can see this. Mm. So you can see that the six the six image uh, the first image has a six has a one on the six column. So that means this image is a six or is a five, depends on what is your first. Uh, if this is a zero, then this is number five. If this is a one, then, then the image is a six. So basically that's just uh, convert uh, the number into, into a vector, into a, into, a, into a vector format. Okay, so here is that, uh, so you will very likely to, to build, um, to, to, you need to do all these steps for all your image recognition tasks. So here is that where we started to build the convolutional neural network. So first call the QRS model sequential to initialize. So that means telling R that I'm going to build a model here. Okay. And I'm here I'm using the the I'm building two uh, I'm using two convolutional layer at the beginning. So here I have a uh, three by three filters, and then there are thirty two of them. And then using the ReLU, the rectify linear. So basically, that is just to make sure that um, your positive value are are going to our only positive value can be can be passed to the next layer, and all the negative value will become zeros. So that is just called the rectify as the activation function. 
And my second um uh, second uh convolutional layer I have sixty sixty four lay uh filters. So basically just uh using this using the filter to scan through the image and then to get the feature map and then uh doing two two times with uh, 32 filters on the first layer, 64 filters on the second layer. And then do the max pooling. So basically just per 2x2 two two matrix, uh, capture the maximum value of the 2x2 of the two two matrix. You can also, uh, there's also some uh, other method like the average pooling, uh, but most people use the max pooling just to ca capture the max, maximum max value in the 2x2 two two space randomly drop out one-fourth of the database. Flatten. Flatten is basically just uh, like literally like flatten the matrix into 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 a into a into a matrix or a vector form. And so this is ba this is basically the, the the fully connected neural network. So basically just converting the feature map into into the output into the input that is for the regular neural network. So if you watch my vid previous video using the regular neural network where I derived the gradient uh, and using the gradient descent to do that. So basically, if you remove the two convolutional layer, then this is basically the, the regular uh, neural network. So I just added two convolutional um, layers at the beginning. And then uh, since it is a very good uh, method to recognize image, so, so that it, it increased the, uh, the accuracy for the prediction. So basically, I have 128 un uh, neurons for the first layer, and then using the same ReLU uh, uh, activation function, drop out one uh, one half of the of the data. Uh, by dropping the data, that means uh, well, it's just to help you to prevent over to prevent overfitting the data. So it is very it's it's help very helpful and important to make sure that you do drop out some of the some of the um, the output from the previous layer. And the last uh, layer, I have ten uh, union basic uh, neurons. Um, basically, that is just the output uh, uh, that we we already know for sure that there's only ten uh, possible outcome for 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 the outcome for the for the digits. So that's why there's a ten. And the softmax is basically just uh, similar to the sigmoid function, and then you assign a probability per for for each number. So you can something you can have like a like a very small number here, and then until like a ninety nine percent, zero point nine nine, and then all number become and then the rest is all zero. So that means at ninety nine percent, this number is going to be a six. So in our case, that is a correct predi uh, prediction. So softmax is basically just a, like a multiple. Uh, a, a, a classification problem that with a uh, multiple classification, not just zero and one like the logistic regression, but it's like uh, there you can have multiple classes for from to get as a, as an output. Okay, so here you set up your model, and then here is that uh, how you are going to de define your um, cost function and your method to optimize it. So here we use the categorical cross entropy. So that is just a, a, a loss function to uh, to to for a classification problem using the added data delta. Uh, this is just a method to for the optimization for optimize optimizing your cost function. So previously in the regular neural network, I use uh, I derived my own gradient using stochastic gradient descent or or the batch gradient descent to optimize it. So. You can you can read the curious document to uh to to refer more uh, other cost function or other optimization methods, and here we are interested in the accuracy. So basically, that will return the probability, uh, for each image per per all the possible outcome. And here is uh is just uh to run the data set. That means uh so here I mean I I going to run the same uh math same uh, convolutional neural network twelve times through the same data set with uh the batch size one hundred twenty eight so I'm processing one hundred twenty eight picture per 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 batch so um I, I think you already familiar I mean it's it's similar to the to the basic um, standard machine learning concept so. Uh, I'll just briefly uh, talk about this, and then you split by um, 
you have a split. So basically, your so for your training set, you split uh twenty eighty percent, and then and then training. So we are still now talking about the training set. Okay, and then here you can evaluate uh evaluate using the model to to test on on your testing set. So if you run this model, it's going to take a while. So it, for me, uh, it's, it's, it will definitely going to take a while to train since it's, uh, it's a deep learning, machine learning uh, algorithm. And actually, if you can, if you run, if you actually run the model, I actually, for my first and second iteration out of total 12 iteration, uh, I get about like 90% or 90, 95% accuracy. So I just hit stop right away. But uh, if you want to make sure the, the model be trained all the way to the end, then you can just keep running. But it might just, uh, it might take a while to, 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 to run the algorithm. Okay. So I hit the stop button uh, about after two or three iterations, but I already got a very good model over there. So uh, now, I'm not going to train it right in this video since it's going to take like a, maybe hours. But here I'm just going to, since I already have the model, I'm just going to recognize my own image here. So let's do, uh, let's write the number here with black uh, background and then white font. Um, so I did the same thing in uh, using the regular neural network and also using the Keras package in Python codes. So here I'm just doing the same thing again and again and then using the R code. So I hope uh, if I if I don't make this too boring for you. So if you if you already know or have seen this video before or or a similar video before, you can feel free to skip it. Converted to 28 by 28, then that's the input. That's the input of the MNIST. So I'm going to overwrite the, that uh, 9 over there. Okay, so I just we just wrote a 5 over there. And now we are going to input this number. And 28 by 28 is the default pixel for using the MNIST. So if you are training on a bigger, larger size, then uh, you have to change your um, your size. So that's also the reason why I need to convert it, the image I just wrote into 28 by 28, so that uh, so that the that model can take my image into this mo into the model to recognize it. So that's the image five, which just uh, I just wrote over over there. And now let's recognize it. Oh well, yeah, it correctly recognized as a five. So uh, I there's still errors errors after uh, a few iteration, but you can, as you can see, it's already returning a good um, outcome here. So uh, if you're if you're only interested in the model, then you can feel free to skip the video. Now I'm just going to try another another number here to to just for fun. But uh, feel free to to skip the video if, it, if you find it boring. And um, using the white color. The reason for the black background and the white font is that just I'm just following the MNIST uh, database. They are all also using the white, uh, the, the black background and the white font. Uh, otherwise, well, sorry for the <laughs> handwriting, but otherwise you will need to use uh, 25 minus all the pixels just to reverse so that all the white uh, font will become black and that all the black background will become white background. So you need to use 25 minus every pixel to, to get the reverse uh, color. And save that as handwriting. Replace it. And now recognize the low import the image again. That's a very ugly <laughs> three I I. <laughs> I wrote. Let's see if the okay, yeah, it recognizes it too. So maybe, maybe, maybe some feature like the the like the the bottom the, the curvature at the bottom is not going to it is not recognized use uh, uh not recognized. So a method some some idea to improve it maybe to add a bigger bigger kernel size. 
the filter size, add a more filter, or maybe you can you can change a, a different activation function. There are like the the tangent one or the leaking the leak relu, uh, a new version of the relu. Uh, maybe uh, drop out more, and also so something like that. Uh, so there here are all the you can you can run a for loop and then using this number as a and then and then uh, make them as A and B and then running a for loop to do a cross valid to do a like a cross validation and then find the the optimized um, the optimal um, kernel size filter number dropout rate uh, and also uh, um, number of neurons in that in in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the um, fully connected network. So you, there, so all the numbers you see in here are all the uh, you can you can you can adjust them, but uh, it might like I said, this is a, like a deep learning algorithm. It might take a very long time to train. So maybe there's some other method to to boost up your speed and efficiency. But uh, these are just possible uh, idea that you can optimize your um, you can optimize your algorithm. So and um, here is just the code that uh, I, I input the uh, I input my own image and then uh, do some uh, transformation like to convert the size and then divide it by two hundred fifty five to, to standardize the pixel number so um, and then to recognize the image so uh, this is how you build a convolutional neural network in R but using the Keras package from Python. And uh, if you are interested in the Python code, I already I, I also have a, have another video just uh, using the same Keras package and then in the, using Python. So basically, the concept is the same. And if you watch that video, you would also know I'm talking about the same thing. It just uh, this is R syntax, that's Python syntax. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and let me know if you have any question.